We are back. Yeah. All right. And we did a video yesterday. Yes. And you have some ideas to speak some more about. Uh, the the reason I like to to go on on this is because I like to make a correlation between the freeze drying process and nanotechnology. And uh, there have been a lot of discussions. Uh, what we do and what can we do for nanotechnology and what is real is the, the governments worldwide spent more money on na na nanotechnology uh, in the past years than in the Apollo project. The spending trend is still going upwards. Drying is an indispensable operation in the fabrication of nano-sized materials. Hence, it is no surprise to find a large number of papers published in the past decade on drying and nano-related materials. Freeze drying was found application in production on nanoparticles for electrochemical, environmental, engineered materials and pharmaceutical industries. The retention of the homogeneous properties typically found in a solution, the small size of particles produced and the long life, long self life obtained, obtained for pharmaceutical applications are the primary reasons for choosing freeze drying. The relatively cheap operation cost compared to the supercritical fluid extraction is another reason. Freezing was found to be a very important step in obtaining desired particle size and properties. Primary, drying of solvent sublimation should be carried out at a temperature below the collapse temperature. Cryoprotectants are frequently necessary in preserving the original properties of active pharmaceutical ingredients. Spray freezing into fluid was found to be an optimal operation in order to minimize the air-liquid in the facial loss of bioactivity. A continuous freeze-drying process for production of granules of non-particles would be in demand, a dream that freeze-drying researchers had, have had for over a decade. This freeze-drying may be carried out under vacuum or at atmospheric pressure using proper gases. Freeze-drying is commonly used in nanoscience and nanotechnologies. Rapid tests biological and clinical applications, diagnostics, nanofood, nanomedicine are some of the subjects commonly use freeze-drying process. In other words, whenever nanotechnology is found, freeze-drying has become a vital processing tool. All this uh, is something which uh, made freeze drying very important tool for the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, all these uh, high technology industries, they produce special products. Uh, our company is producing uh, freeze dryers from a very small size for laboratory use to big scale of uh, equipment for industrial uh, products. Uh, we cover everything and we cover companies all over the world. And we can uh, remind people the name of your company? The company is called uh, Superco Engineering and all the products are named Geller. Uh, they are coming in, uh, in the market with the name Geller. So uh, you re-emphasize the importance and the connection with the nanotechnology field? Definitely. And how it's Definitely. 
interesting for everybody here. Definitely. What you're doing. For these people that are working on nanotechnology, it's a very important tool. And uh, I have uh, mentioned this to uh, all these, uh, let's say, uh, responsible persons uh, who created this uh, Congress. In fact, freeze drying process is not concentrated in nanotechnology, it's concentrated in many fields like uh, food industry, uh, medicine, uh, pharmaceutical industry and so on. So it has a big variety of applications. And when you master this, you achieve more in this industry and many other industries. Yes, of course. You don't have to freeze dry and you do it perfectly and you have a good quality hardware to make it Abs happen. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I explained you yesterday the whole process. It's not necessary to go back to details now, but uh, uh, as I told you, that this is a very important tool which makes the product coming out of freeze drying process has a very long life. Um, so, you were mentioning yes yesterday you have a whole bunch of other stuff that you want to talk about. Um, are they totally unrelated? Or? They are totally unrelated and I would like to go back on uh, such a discussion in, with another opportunity that we meet together and explain a lot of uh, other things. So at the moment I would like to concentrate technically uh, on uh, this Congress and uh, only in this Congress. All right. Yes. So the discussions continue. Yes. And with, uh, with all the people that yes. attend here. Yes. And tonight is a gala dinner. Yes. There's going to be even more discussions happening. I hope that uh, I'll be able to uh, explain more things to all those they are interested to listen what we are doing, in fact. All right. And I guess your roadmap has a bunch of future next gen products. Uh, definitely, yes. We uh, have an upgoing. Uh, research and development. Uh, we have uh, invested a lot of money in research and development and in machinery. And uh, I guess uh, our deep knowledge on this subject will give in the very near future absolutely uh, top quality products. Enable things people haven't thought of before. Yes. Uh, we are in a process now to commercialize uh, a, a top product, uh, which of course I cannot uh, right now uh, give it uh, on the air, but it will be a revolution, really. Revolution? Yes. So you are an important part of the, of the industry? I think so, I think so. And uh, what means industry at what means industrial production and uh, what means uh, let's say quality production I've learned it in all these years I'm uh, as a businessman as an engineer uh, working uh, in all over Europe and uh, this was uh, let's say the key point that we placed quality in the production on the first level. All right, cool. So I'll add this to your, your video from yesterday. We can put them together. Thank you very much.